Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me Kagem. Today we're going to recap the um, Hermes Spring Summer 2024 show um, that was shown in Paris during Paris Fashion Week. Um, so let's recap the show and then we'll go through um, some of the details of the show. I'd love to know what you think about it. If you're following me on Instagram, go find me there. Hi Glamazon Lux. Or if you're in my Facebook group, which is linked below, um, I was posting pictures and stuff from the show, like as it was happening, giving my thoughts. I just wanted to pull everything together here for this video. So I'd love to get your feedback um, on it. So make sure you're going, like, make sure you're following me on my social media. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel, obviously, and hit notifications. Let's start off with um, the ready to wear. The ready to wear was very pastoral um bucolic it reminded me of something that like maybe people in ancient rome would have worn but it doesn't look like costume it was giving me ancient rome vibes because a lot of the clothing um reminded me of this series on hbo that was called rome and it was about the time of you know julius caesar and mark antony i love history i absolutely love it so that was one of my favorite series it's a very old series i'm showing how old i am now because i remember when it was on t literally on tv on hbo i remember um it was before game of thrones and um it's 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 kind of like a cult tv series like if you're someone who loves like very detailed tv series um and like i said before game of thrones and this like collection reminded me a lot of the colorways from that series so very like i said pastoral bucolic you know farmhouse but still modern at the same time i thought the set design of the show was beautiful um there was like these beautiful meadows and things like that it was very nice it was classic big age um out of the top out of the top three paris girls so big dior big c big lv and big h do, do i think big h had the best collection no you know i do think louis vuitton and chanel's collections were stronger i wasn't crazy about Dior's collection as you know um but this was a good showing from them so let's talk about the first theme of the collection the first theme of the collection um first of all was like this really beautiful strong colorway between red and burgundy so very beautiful like a very strong deep colorway um i mean i think that these colors are very interesting for spring summer um a lot of you told me you thought that the colors were very autumnal i can see why um you guys thought they were very autumnal i actually think that these colors are fine for spring because i think with colors it depends like on the fabric and like the fit of the clothing and the way the clothing looks um on you versus the actual color i don't know if i believe in like spring summer colors and autumn winter colors i think colors can be worn throughout the year it just depends like the cut of the fabric and the clothing but i can see why people um thought that um these colorways um were very autumnal although to me i thought they were fine um another theme was cream so lots of lighter tones again going with the whole spring summer thing um lots of you know lighter colorways so cream colorways are kind of like off-white it wasn't like snow white but more like cream and off-white i would love to know what you guys thought about um this colorway do you prefer the burgundy slash red colorways or did you prefer um the cream colorway in terms of the ready to wear like which ones um did you like um the most in terms of clothing and which ones like would you um pick for yourself um i also really liked this i'll insert a picture here of this really cool look there were some beautiful details um the top is quite sheer but i thought that this was really nice and this was like i think one of my favorite outfits um from the collection um itself so i, th I think in terms of ready to wear the ready to wear was very nice um it looked very well made it looked um very like put together and it did look um you know it just looked like classic you know big hate ready to wear very stealth wealth very sleek um and put together um but like i said you know did it take my breath away like louis vuitton's ready to wear which i thought was amazing chanel's ready to wear which was a lot of fun um no but i thought it was cute okay now i want to talk to you guys about um the next theme which is now part of accessories there was one bag that kind of took the spotlight um through this whole collection which is this bag the arson we've seen this bag before it was on previous catwalks i think the previous um, collection or maybe one before that but we've seen it before it's called the arson it comes in two sizes it comes in this large one and a small version the mini arson or petit arson um 
this bag you know these like half moon bags these like hobo bags they're so in right now the girls love them they're very very popular um i'm not surprised that bk's just trying to you know get in on the trend with this one here this is cute you know i think that this is going to be popular normally i feel like big h honey she's talking big h glyphics to us whenever there's a catwalk show or a fashion show and whatever bag she puts on the catwalk that are not a birkin kelly or constance it's normally a signal to us about the loyalty we're supposed to show i definitely think that this will be like a bag which um essays would like to sell to clients um and i think that this will because it's obviously a non-quote bag it's not a quote bag it will be a non-quote bag um i'm very curious to know what you think of it um you know i don't know whether i think that this is like more intriguing than like for example the loop um from louis vuitton which i think would be like a good comparison to this one um i don't know i still feel like the loop is maybe a better choice just from pure aesthetics this looks a bit too plain for me but i'm curious to know um what you guys um think of it it was all over the catwalk literally all over the catwalk um you couldn't miss it it was just like everywhere like the whole time and i was like i was really struck by how many of them that they put um in in the catwalk show in a way i kind of like that they put it a lot because to me it shows that they're not afraid to try new things one of the biggest criticisms about big h which is a fair critique is that big h is afraid to try new things I think at the end of the day, to be the number one fashion girl, you need to be known for your fashions, boo -boo, and you need to try new things, whether you like it or not. Um, you can't rely on three ideas that were done in the past, um, which people love today. You know, people love those three bags, and that's great and stuff. But we need to see new ideas, like new ideas, not just consistently like redoing like an old thing. The accent looks new to me. Um, even though, of course, we've seen it in the previous collection, it's a new style that they're promoting. I can appreciate that they're trying to do something new. I also like that they're not afraid, like they don't feel pressure to always have like Kelly's or whatever. I think there was a Kelly Elan in the collection um, out on, on, the, on the catwalk and there was this um, Birkin. It was very big. I'm not sure about the size. Could have been a 35, could have been a 40. Um, you know this one was right at the end cool i like that i like that they're not like oh if we have you know we're known for birkins and kelly's we have to have them in the show you know it, we just have to have them so yeah i thought that that was actually pretty cool that they were not too like worried about the fact that you know okay you know we're known for these like three iconic handbags let's have them in the show all the time i like that they're trying um new things as well so i can only respect that they're trying new things i think sometimes with um, big H. People put the brand on a pedestal and put and and I think sometimes people make it seem like the brand is the number one brand in fashion because it has three like very difficult um, and very coveted um, items. And don't get me wrong, like we all love Big H Henny and her wig and it's a fantastic brand. But I think in order to be the number one brand of fashion, you have to have way more than just three really coveted things. I think you have to be holistically that girl, honey, putting your wig on in basically every category. And I do think that Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Dior, um, the Italian brands like Fendi, Ferragamo, um, Valentino, of course, even, you know, my favorite Versace, I think all of them and Gucci as well, all of them compete very well in a lot of those spaces. And I think that Big H, it's good that Big H feels like she has to compete like everyone else, because I think competition is healthy and I think competition is good. All right, I want to go through some of the um, accessories that were seen at the presentations for VIPs. Um, they were uploaded onto social media. Here are some pictures from Passport. Let's just go through some of them. So these are coming. F these are coming for spring summer 2024. They've reissued the Constance Elan in box box leather. Um, you know, again, another thing about Big H is Big H loves to reissue things, honey. She loves a good reissue. 
Um, I think always reissuing sometimes can be a little bit like, mm, you know, let's see new things. But at the same time, like I said, they, they do release new things and we need to give them credit for that. I think the Mini Ruli was released, if I recall correctly, in 2010. The Synetic was released in 2017. The Maximals, I believe, was last year, wasn't it? So what, 2022? Um, we've seen the Arsene this year. Um, they do release things and they do have new things as well that are new and not like it's not like part of the Kelly family or the Birkin family and they do have those items as well. So the Constance Elan is an older design that was discontinued and they're now bringing it back. Um, so like I said it's here in box leather. I'd love to know what you think about this. I'm curious. I think this is coming back because those East West bags honey the girls love them, people love East West bags. We've seen them at Dior with the DJ. We've seen them at Big LV, honey. There's a, there's a really, really cute Dauphine East West bag, super cute. Um, the on the go as well, they've made an East West version of it. Um, so I think that this is like one reason why they've brought this back is because they're very trendy right now and the girls love them. There's also um, this Mini Kelly, it's called the Mini Kelly Marqueterie um, and it has a horse on it um, and the horse has like this um, like vest I think on it and it says 24 and you know of course 24 is the address of the Mothership Boutique on Rue Faubourg Saint Honoré, that's a cute um, touch. Um, you know I, I think that this would, you'd have to be a big H collector um, for this, but I'm sure collectors will love it because, it, you know, the 24, you know, obviously is just giving homage to the flagship store. There's also this one here, it's called the Birkin Disco Football. Um, so this is a Birkin 20 and it has a disco ball on it. And then they've painted like the outside of Football Saint Honoré, um, the windows. Um, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about this and I'm someone who loves the 70s. I love Disco Honey. I love that whole decade. I'm not sure about this one, but let me know what you think. Um, so those are, okay, now I wanted to show you, okay, now they're also bringing back, guess what they're bringing back? The shoulder Birkin, which was designed by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Um, this is a really iconic design. Um, you know, Jean-Paul Gaultier was a former creative director of the brand. Even though he's retired from fashion, his brand um, is kind of having a bit of a renaissance. It's owned by P the Puig family of Spain, who have their holding company called Puig. Um, and there are a lot of guest designers who come and do collections for his brand. Um, his brand is kind of having a bit of a renaissance. It's very popular. It's very popular on social media. Um, I was very impressed with the things I saw from the Jean-Paul Gaultier brand when I was in London in May. The clothing has great sizing choices. The fabrics are very nice. It's great for people in, in conservative countries as well. There are a lot of options for us. Um, so for them to reissue the shoulder back in, which is one of his iconic designs for Big H, um, it's very interesting. It'll be coming back. This is going to be impossible to get, I'm sure. I'm willing to bet money to get this from the store. It will be so, so, so hard um, to get. I think if you love Jean-Paul Gaultier, this is a great collector's piece, but specifically, if you love Big H and you love the design of the shoulder back in, you will love this. I mean, this is going to be huge, like huge. So this is a reissue. So like I said, it was an older design and then they discontinued it. Now they're bringing it back um, here and it will be uh, coming back in, I think, I think here it said in denim, in denim and Swift. So it's, it's in denim and Swift here. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's going to be absolutely huge. That is, that is going to be huge. It's going to be massive. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait. I would love to know if any of you are going to request this. I mean, just looking at it, it's giving, I'm a quota bag honey. Um, you know, a lot of the really special bags, um, from Big H, like the special, the special limited edition bags, they come in the classic orange packaging on the outside, but on the inside, they come in a blue box. The Kelly on Desautre does, the Birkin on Desautre does. Just looking at this, it's giving, oh, hi, hi Glamazons, I'm coming in a blue box. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's like the inside, like packaging. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be huge. I would love to know what you guys think about this. I think this is an iconic collector's piece and this is something which if you're offered this bag, you have to take it. Um, there's certain bags from Big H that I feel like if you're offered the bag, even if you think you don't like it, you need to take it and then slowly just get used to 
working it into your wardrobe. I know it sounds crazy, but just hear me out. This is such an iconic design. While I'm not a huge fan of reissues all the time, I think if you're going to reissue a bag and take something from the archive, it should be the shoulder back in. This is an iconic collector's piece. Um, and like I said, this is one of those pieces where don't, don't panic. If you're offered this bag, you have to take it and then you can figure out how to integrate it into your wardrobe. I know some people might be like, whoa, I don't like this. Just think about it. Um, particularly if you like the baguette at Fendi, you like this because obviously it's a shoulder bag, but you can carry it as a top handle as well. I'm sure the, the, the loyalty required for that piece is going to be significant if it even is going to be circulated widely, because I would imagine it would be offered to VIP clients first, but you let me know what you think. And the next one I want to show you here that will be on the way is this one here called Fonce Belle um, Chen. And this is another reissue. There was a previous edition of this. Although I must say I'm not as huge a fan of this one as I feel like it looks similar to the Veru. Um, and I think that the Veru looks nice. A lot of you have told me that the hardware of the Veru looks like a, like a public toilet stall. Um, opening thing which is hysterical because it does but I still think that the Viru looks um, better than this. Now I want to quickly show you um, something which I love and this is from the previous collection it's this one here it's the mini Medul. This is actually my favorite new bag from them I think this is beautiful it comes in box leather I think yeah I think the black one comes in box leather I believe um, I love this it's really beautiful this one should be circulating so when I travel to Europe I'll update you. Um, so yeah, but this one is from autumn winter 2023. All the other ones um, are brand new. So those are all the new things that are coming out. There's some other new um, things coming, but I wasn't crazy about them. Like I wasn't gagged. So I'm not going to feature them here because I wasn't like excited and I want to focus on like being more excited about things. I would love to know what are your favorite pieces um, from the uh, fashion show? What are some of the press support pieces that you liked? Um, and what are some of the um, general pieces that you liked? I've completely forgot to tell you about one piece that I loved which was this absolutely breathtakingly stunning red coat I'll insert a picture here gorgeous beautiful I'm wearing red so I'm partial <laughs> to it um love love this I think this is beautiful I who wants to bet this is going to be 20,000 euros just looking at it. <laughs> it, it, it it was speaking to me and it was saying hello I'm 20,000 euros okay <laughs> that's what it looks like to me I'd love to know what you think about this and of course I've just mentioned it but let me put up a picture again the shoulder back in um so uh you know archival design by Jean-Paul Gaultier that was discontinued Jean-Paul Gaultier also um created the Kelly pochette which is still in circulation he created the original Kelly dance they discontinued it and then they reissued the dance but they made their own modifications um as well um and of course uh, the shoulder back in he also created the so black back in um and of course the shadow so he's had some big hits if I've forgotten anything you'll let me know um the so black back in um, is also discontinued the shadow is in circulation the dance is in circulation the pochette is in circulation and now the shoulder back in returns um this is going to be very exciting i'd love to know what you guys think about everything please consider subscribing to my channel sticking around because i feel like I don't know, I just kind of feel like I have so much great content on the way. Um, I'll be traveling this autumn winter. I don't want you guys to miss out on my travel content. I'm already planning my trips. I'm planning all the great content I'm gonna shoot. I'll be all over Europe. I'm so excited. Please consider subscribing to my channel, hit notifications. Um, and yeah, also sign up to the newsletter and go join the Facebook group. I feel like you're missing out if you're not in the group and go follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm active everywhere, so just go find me. I'm also on the Threads app and I updated it. Um, I think I updated it like two days ago, or if not, I'm about to update it now because I was like, oh yeah, I need to go post on Threads. So go find me on social media. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week in my subsequent videos.